John Nash was an American mathematician who was one of the first to outline the fundamentals of game theory. His life was dramatized in the Ron Howard film A Beautiful Mind, where he was played by Russell Crowe. Nash suffered from schizophrenia, which makes his accomplishments all the more impressive, especially considering that they were significant enough to win him the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1994. His seminal contribution was the mathematical identification of equilibria in non-cooperative games, which we call Nash Equilibrium. Translated from math to English, the Nash Equilibrium is an outcome where no player regrets their choice, given the choices of the other players. The Nash Equilibrium for the Prisoner's Dilemma is found by following each player's dominant strategy. If a player has a dominant strategy, then the Nash Equilibrium must be found in the path for that dominant strategy. And so that's how we know that our yellow rectangle here is going to be the Nash Equilibrium. But let's walk through the logic that the definition gives us. A Nash Equilibrium is an outcome where no player regrets their choice given the choices of the other players. Let's start by looking at this outcome here. Is this a Nash equilibrium? Here's how we would check. First, we look at each player in isolation and think, will they regret their choice? So let's look first at player A. They're getting this payoff of one year. If they change their choice, they would move this way. They would change from cooperate to confess and they would get zero years in prison. That means they would regret their choice. One year in prison is worse than zero years in prison. So player A would regret their choice. So right away we know this is not a Nash equilibrium. But we can also see that if we look at player B, they're getting the payoff of one year. If they change to confess, they would have gotten this payoff. And this is the key to understanding the Nash equilibrium. We think about whether the player regrets their choice. They can't regret the choice of the other player. So we only think, what would the change be if they changed their choice only? Since player B would also regret their choice, again, we know that this outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. So we know this one is not a Nash equilibrium. Well, what about this outcome here? Does either player regret their choice with this outcome? We can look at player B and see that now they're getting zero years. If they change their choice, they would get one year in prison, and that's worse. So player B does not regret their choice. But what about player A? They're getting five years in prison. If they change their choice, they would have chosen confess instead of cooperate, and they would have ended up here, and they would have gotten three years in prison instead of five. So player A does regret their choice. And so we know that that one is also not a Nash equilibrium. That leaves this one here. We can check and see, do, does any player regret their choice? For player A, they do not regret their choice. Changing to cooperate would add a year of prison for them. But player B, if we look at player B, they're getting five years if they change their choice from cooperate to confess, then they would get three years. So they would regret that choice because they could have shaved two years off their prison sentence by confessing instead. So none of these three are Nash equilibria. But then we can look at this one that we've already identified as the Nash equilibrium. Player A is getting three years. If they change from confess over to cooperate, they would end up with five years. That's worse. So player A does not regret their decision. They are getting uh, three years instead of five. Player B, we can take a look at, they're getting three years in prison. If they go from confess to cooperate, then they would move over to here and they would get five years. That's worse. So player B also does not regret their choice. Of course, they both would prefer to move this way, but that is the key insight of the Nash equilibrium. 
They can't change what the other person does. They can only change their own decision. And so while both of them may long for this outcome when they get stuck over here, they can't make that choice by themselves. The Nash equilibrium is just thinking about your own decision. And so from that, we know that this will be the outcome if both players follow their self-interest. This is where the game will end. Let's try another game. Here we have player A and player B. Player A can play low or high, and player B can play left or right. In the payoff matrix, we can see what each player gets if they land on that outcome. Let's see if we can find the Nash equilibrium for this game. If player A plays high and player B plays left, a gets $200 while B gets $100. Does any player regret their choice? Player A doesn't. If they go back in time and pick low instead, they would end up with $100 instead of $200. So they don't regret their decision of playing high. If player B went back in time and chose right instead of left, they would get $0 instead of $100. So they don't regret their choice either. That means this is a Nash equilibrium. What about the other outcomes? Are they Nash equilibrium too? Let's check. At high right, player A is happy with their choice of high, earning them $300 instead of the $200 a choice of low would have gotten them. But player B has regret. They got $0 by choosing right, and they would have gotten $100 if they chose left instead. So this is not a Nash equilibrium because player B regrets their choice. The outcome at low left has both players regretting their choice. Player A would prefer the $200 at high left and player B would prefer the $200 at low right. The outcome at low right seems like the best outcome because both players get $200 and a total of $400 for everyone is the best of any outcome. But this is not a Nash equilibrium because if they landed here, player A would say, darn, I should have gone with high. That would get them $300 instead of $200. So this outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. What happens if I change the payout for low and right? Let's see if we can find the Nash equilibrium now. If player A chooses high and player B chooses left, neither player regrets their choice for the same reasons we just discussed. So this one is a Nash equilibrium. If player A chooses high but player B chooses right, player B will regret their choice. They would have rather chosen left, not right. So that one is not a Nash equilibrium. If player A chooses low and player B chooses left, both players will regret their choice. Player A would have rather picked high and gotten $200 instead of $100, and player B would have rather chosen right and gotten $200 instead of $0. So that is not a Nash equilibrium either. That leaves us with player A choosing low and player B choosing right. Neither player regrets their choice here. For player A, $350 is now better than the $300 they would have gotten choosing high instead of low. And for player B, $200 is better than the $0 they would have gotten playing left instead of right. So now this would be a Nash equilibrium. You can have more than one Nash equilibrium in a game. So when looking for them, you always need to check every outcome. We noted that the outcome in the prisoner's dilemma is not the best outcome for both prisoners. To get a grasp on that, we can apply the concept of Pareto optimality. Named after the economist Vilfredo Pareto, an outcome is Pareto optimal when you cannot make one player better off without making another player worse off. The outcome at high left is not Pareto optimal, even though it is a Nash equilibrium. Player A is getting $200 and player B is getting $100. But I can make player B better off without making A worse off by moving to low right, where both players get $200.
that outcome is Pareto optimal. Although we could make player A better off by moving to high right, that outcome makes player B worse off. So this outcome is Pareto optimal. Are there any others? Low left is not Pareto optimal because we can make both players better off at low right. But look at high right. It is possible to make player B better off at the other outcomes, but player A is worse off at those outcomes. So there is no way to make one player better off without making another player worse off. That makes this Pareto optimal. When searching for Nash equilibria, you look at things from each player's perspective in isolation. When searching for Pareto optimal outcomes, you take the view of an onlooker who has taken the oath to make changes that do no harm. Let's look for Pareto optimal outcomes in our modified game. Is high left Pareto optimal? No, because both players are better off at low right. What about high right? Is that Pareto optimal? Nope. Again, both players are better off in low right now. Let's take a look at low left. This isn't Pareto optimal either, again, because there's another outcome that makes both players better off. That outcome is low right, which is Pareto optimal, because one or both players protest a change to every other possible outcome. Identifying Nash equilibria and Pareto optimal outcomes can be really tricky, but the more you practice, the better you will be at thinking strategically in your own life.